discussion up next. And that panel moderator that we have for us today is Shelly, who's just joined me on stage. Welcome, Shelly. Hello. Oh, I think you're on mute still, Shelly, but I will keep introducing you anyway while we do that. Huh? There we go. How Perfect. are you? It's Good, been thank a, you. such an amazing and inspirational day. I'm so glad to be bringing in this amazing panel. And we are so glad to have you bringing them in. And I'll tell everyone quickly about you, Shelly, because we need to make sure you as the moderator also get introduced. So Shelly Brunswick right here, she is the COO of Space Foundation. She's got her amazing background there to remind you. She brings a broad perspective and a deep vision of the global space ecosystem. In fact, she was named 2021 Global Technology Leader. She received the 2020 Diversity and Inclusion Officer and Role Model of the Year Award by Women Tech Network. And she plays an active leadership role with several global organizations, including United Nations Space for Women, the Women Tech Network, World Business Angels Investment Forum, and others. And she has an amazing group here with her today. So I will hand it over to you, Shelley, to introduce your wonderful panel. Welcome to today's stage. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And if our panelists are able to join us, I see Kathy coming in and Jen. And Sage all is here. So great to see you all. I guess we're not on mute. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Wonderful. Can you all still hear me? Yes. Wonderful. So I wanted to say thank you so much. I'm so honored to be moderating this international interdisciplinary panel of amazing thought leaders for Women Tech Network. And I want to thank Anna, Women Tech Network, and all the sponsors that make today possible. So thank you so much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce each of our panelists, and then they're going to do a little two-minute intro um, and opening statement. So the first person I'd like to start with is Dr. Jennifer Blank. Jen is a NASA astrobiologist, research scientist employed by the Blue Marble Space Institute of Science at the NASA Ames Research Center in Silicon Valley. Currently, Jen leads a NASA field project that involves human and robotic exploration of volcanic caves in Northern California, practicing for the future missions to caves on the moon and Mars. Jen, this is amazing. Tell us a little bit about your intro statement. Oh, well, just um, these days, I'm obsessed with human robot teaming <laughs> and how robots can help us do our jobs better in the future, both on Earth and uh, one day on the moon and then beyond. <laughs> so I am a geochemist by training, so I study volcanoes and the fluids that evolve from mixing of water and volcanoes to essentially support microbial life. So I'm an, also an astrobiologist looking for life on other planets. I love this because it's very interdisciplinary because you're always Shelley, I think you need, you're and, back on. And because oh. uh, you get to interact with people from many different backgrounds and disciplines. And it's very interactive and open because um, so much of it involves feeling uncomfortable because we're out of our expertise and looking for connections and um, ways mm -hmm. to find, um, I guess, overlaps and innovative ways to address these uh, search for life related problems and questions. Well, thank you, Jen. That's so exciting. And what an amazing background. And I want to make sure, can you all still hear me? Because I heard some noise back there where maybe there's some te technical challenges. Is everyone still hearing me OK? Yeah. Okay, fantastic. So next, I want to introduce Kathy DeMarcos, an unstoppable, impactful alchemist in business. She is the founder and CEO of Solutions to You and recognized as an internationally conscious speaker and global award-winning business advisor and mentor to people who choose to influence for impact. Now, I'm going to let her introduce herself a little bit more, but one of the keynotes I want to highlight is she just had her book come out this week. So congratulations, Kathy, and over to you for your intro statement. Thank you. Thanks, Shelley. Firstly, it's such a privilege and an honour to be here today. And I think for me, this is actually a topic that is so important and so relevant. You know, mentorship for me, it's so important in us actually recognising that we're actually the oxygen that actually elevates, 
you know, those mentees, those women, you know, and then we actually provide that sponsorship because when we can share our knowledge and then actually gift that opportunity for them to actually sit at a table of influence, then we are generally going to create a ripple effect that enables them to not only have a voice. That's one of the things that we've heard. I think, you know, women actually having that opportunity to have a voice, but also to have a voice at that table. That's what this is about. So um, thank you. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much, Kathy, for joining us. And again, we look forward to hearing more about your book and your philanthropic efforts in Tanzania shortly. So thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so I, I am going to tell you, I am having a technical difficulty. My screen has frozen. So I want to see Susan, have you joined us? So I do not see Susan on my screen. Does anybody else see Susan on the screen? No. Okay, so we'll come back to Susan. I'm sure she might be having a little technical difficulty, as am I, but the show must go on. So next, I'd like to introduce Sejal Bhathalia. Sejal recently graduated with her bachelor's in mechanical engineering. She's published four papers related to bio-inspired design and additive manufacturing in aerospace and has filed four patents. She was an off-site and an industrial design program, a cohort, and a recipient of the BIPOC scholarship. She serves as the chairperson of SEDS India and is the national representative at SEDS Earth. And if that's not enough, she co-founded the nonprofit organization, NASA, that teaches the underprivileged performing arts. And she also works at Collins Aerospace. So thank you, Sejal, for joining us. I'd like to have you give us your opening statement. Oh, wow, Shelly. Thank you for that introduction. And thank you for having me here. I am absolutely honored and honestly really excited because I think I'm going to have so many more mentors after, after this talk. I'm definitely going to be reaching out. And uh, I think the importance of, of this panel, the importance of mentorship has actually enabled me to reach where I am today. It would not be without a lot of uh, people who are my mentors who have been, you know, back me, giving me these constant notes, these constant checks, and also in a way guiding me and allowing me to be the person that I want to be at the same time, which I think is so important in mentorship. Because, because it wasn't actually a fixed path that I took. It wasn't a fixed path that I think any of the inspirational women and people and gender minorities around me took as well. <clears throat> Sorry. So honestly, yeah, really excited to be here and to get into and dig into some of the questions that I know are very, very exciting. So thank you once again. Absolutely. Well, we do have some exciting questions. And as everyone can tell, we have a very diverse, multi-generational, multi-regional uh, panel to talk today. So what I'm going to share is a little bit about the Space Foundation Workforce Development Roadmap. Now, we're really passionate about um, education and innovation and workforce development. And with that, we have a five-step workforce development roadmap that includes awareness, access, training, connecting and mentoring. And we think mentoring is so important because mentors can help you overcome many of those other workforce development issues. Mentors can help you learn about awareness, awareness of opportunities. They can do access, giving you an access point into those opportunities. They can provide you with areas you might need training or where you can get training or internships or fellowships. And then of course, they can help you network into the industry you wanna be in. So mentors are so critical to that workforce development roadmap. Now, what I'd like to do is, as I said, each of our panelists is very different and lives in a different region of the world. So what I'd like to do is ask everyone to share a little bit about their journey and how they got to where they are. And Jen, I'm gonna start with you because your work at NASA sounds so exciting. So share a little bit about your journey and what brought you to where you are today. Um, thanks, Shelley. And I, I love hearing everyone's stories, it's, it's fantastic. Um, I've had a sinusoidal journey, <laughs> which it seems to be such a common sort of common feature of many women, many women uh, thought leaders I meet, that um, I knew I wanted to be a scientist, but I majored in English at university. I just took a lot of science courses because I wanted to be a Renaissance woman, <laughs> and that actually qualified me for a geology degree. And But anyway, I've, I've worked in several venues in government, academia, and working for this Blue, Pro Blue Marble Space uh, nonprofit now, I love it because 
I have an affiliation with NASA, which I've earned through my education. I have a PhD from Caltech. Um, but this gives me the opportunity also to, as you mentioned, Shelley, mentor and network, do things that are that might not be available to me if I were confined by the, um, I guess the, the rules of being a civil servant. So it gives me a little less job security because I have to go out and you know, beat the bushes to get my own projects funded or find collaborators, but I, I love it. And I've worked um, to help start astrobiology programs in India and in New Zealand, and I've taught uh, in four or five continents, I guess now, um, mostly courses in astrobiology. And I really love that um, that flexibility. And I think this role of mentoring is, is so important and sponsoring. And also I, my goal is for, for not just women, but for all people, but I t tend to get gravitate towards women mentees, is to try to give these women the opportunities I didn't have or had to really fight for. <laughs> and uh, as I watch many of my contemporaries leave leave the field for various reasons. Um, I want to make sure that if, if you know, younger generations decide to do something else, it's not because of hardship, but because they found another passion. Fantastic. Thank you, Jen. And you highlighted an important part of mentorship. There's different types of mentors. Mm -hmm. There's mentors, champions, and coaches, you know, and each one plays a role. And I think that's really important, which segues into Kathy. So Kathy, you do a lot of mentoring and coaching. And so, and now you're from Australia. So, you know, Jen and I are in North America and we got Kathy from mm -hmm. Australia. Kathy, could you share a little bit about your journey? Because again, you have a very diverse background. You just came out with a book. You do uh, charity work in Tanzania. What what brought you here? You know, sometimes we actually think that that straight road is going to get us to where we're meant to be faster. But I can tell you that my journey has been nothing other than, you know, jagged. So my background is actually finance, structured finance. But through my career, I actually had... Um, I guess what I would say, challenging times. Those challenging times ended up meaning that through the financial crisis, the global financial crisis, I was repossessing people's homes and businesses. Mm. During that time, I had suicidal clients. That then meant that I realised really quickly that it didn't really matter how quick I was in my job. I actually needed to do more. So I then studied and became a qualified counsellor. I practised whilst I still stayed in the finance industry. But that then enabled me to start thinking bigger. And so I started dabbling in what was called the consulting world and giving advice to other institutions. However, when Ebola broke out, my wonderful 16-year-old daughter said, I'm going to go and volunteer in Africa. And I think, you know, through my life, I've realised that we need to actually enable people to truly have a voice and to actually follow their own roadmap. If we don't do that, we're actually preventing them for all sorts of possibilities. So for me, it was how do I actually enable a 16 year old to go into Africa? You know, she actually wanted to go into Tanzania. So that was slightly more comfortable because that was the East Coast. But through that volunteering, it really opened my mind as to what I could be and the choices that I made. So I started to become intentionally conscious about what I wanted to do. And that then led to my philanthropical work. So we not only then built water tanks, and we funded this ourselves, but we built water tanks. We ended up helping projects abroad, create microfinance businesses for women. And now I actually run leadership programs for young children and entrepreneurs. So. For me, it was really actually equipping anybody around me to actually start unlearning what they thought needed to happen so that they could relearn what they honestly felt from within to create their own roadmap. So, you know, what we talked about earlier of sponsorship is so important. Bringing anybody to that table and enabling them to have a voice is critical. And we all have that opportunity. So. I had another crisis, you know, moment, and that was having my father pass away suddenly and my mother having a heart attack the day before my father passing away. That led to me realising that through storytelling, through writing, I could actually have a greater impact. So, you know, I think my message is 
don't limit yourself to anything. My latest book is actually called Think Limitlessly. And I actually couple that with a journal, which is intentionally conscious living. So my message is think bigger. Don't just think big and actually ask for help. Because I can assure you, you know, it's not just us that are actually talking today that are willing to help. There are many people, but you've got to ask first. Fantastic. That's fantastic, Kathy, and amazing. And I also know I'm going to just share with our audience that you're an amazing person to give financial uh, acumen as as a, you, you do mentorship for that. So amazing what you're doing and helping in others. Oh, thank you. I think economic security, particularly for women, is incredible. And it's one of the things that we overlook. So, yes, I'm very passionate about that. Thank you, Shelley. <laughs> You're welcome, Kathy. Well, Sejal, we met because you were a United Nations Office of Outer Space Affairs mentee, and we both know your mentor very well, Chara, and you did a study on mentorship for, you know, um, minority women and regions of the world and how it helps. But tell us a little bit about your journey, because obviously you have patents, you have a nonprofit, you have a job. How did all this come about? Uh, so I think it all happened in stages, honestly. And uh, one of the biggest advice that, you know, all my mentors have given me, especially even uh, Chiara, and she's mentioned that you should always authentically be yourself. So I've seen people around me who go into engineering careers. I have, a, I have my bachelor's in mechanical engineering. I graduated this year in July. And I've been interning at Collins since February, Collins Aerospace, as an analysis engineer. And then after July, I was offered a full-time job, and I'm working there now uh, full-time. So I realized that everyone has typical paths to take you know, an engineering degree and get into an engineering job. But I always, always knew in my heart uh, that it was much more than that for me, especially because I, I am an artist. I am a dancer. So that's also one of the ways in which I really love expressing myself. So I think about the, the patents, I am passionate about innovation, honestly. And, and most of them uh, actually revolve around addressing the sustainability development goals. They revolve around addressing problems of, of the people that we usually would have not noticed or in fact neglected. And say, you know, one example of that is developing a tool for gender minorities who would menstruate in space to actually help life on Earth. So how do you change a sanitary products when you're in the microgravity environment? And honestly, I like this was a problem that must have existed before I was born. Uh, I saw an article by, um, you know, like how Sally Ride was asked the absurd questions of how many tampons she would need for a week. I, I don't know if <laughs> some of us have heard, heard this here, but I didn't. I was like, okay, you know, definitely something's changed. This was before I was born. Uh, and I Googled it that night and i saw this post on instagram so honestly anything can inspire innovation um and i googled it and i realized that there's very limited research on this so this is what you know led me to to work on these innovative kind of ideas and file these patterns um just on the non-profit front i'll quickly share an anecdote uh i was volunteering at a cancer home as, as a college student and this little girl sat in my lap and she had cancer so she sits on my lap and uh, I was like, hey, so what do you want to be when you grow up? Because that's a question you just ask, right? And for most of us here, it could be artist or an astronaut and definitely, you know, to go to space. I mean, for, for people who are really passionate about it. But that little girl looked at me and she was like, but what could I possibly be? And then you realize that as kids, we're taught to have hopes and dreams and passions. But there's an entire section in this society that believes they don't even have the privilege to do that. So I think I just wanted to kind of break down those walls that exist within society. And one of my passions is going back to the dance. So I've, in fact, interacted with such diverse people, some of whom have never seen their parents, some of whom have never seen the world because they were really impaired. Uh, some of whom who can't even stand up. But, you know, the one thing that connects all of them is their passion for learning and their passion for having someone there to listen to their needs, to their concerns, and to help them out in whatever little way they can. So I think as Jen and Kathy both mentioned about giving back, and I think I've 
heard this from Shelly time and on because I've connected with her and she's helped me so much in, in where I am today. So I think at the crux of it, it is that. It is about the little things that we can do to give back. So yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Sejal, that's amazing. So I'm now gonna kind of ask each of you a question and if somebody else wants to jump on, please do that. So Jen, what are some of the most important things a mentor can share with a mentee or a protege? What are some of the most important things? Um, well, you sort of mentioned, I think, um, or I guess, I guess the last speaker, or was it Kathy, you mentioned that there's some things like action and advancement, those sort of tangible things. But I think the one most important thing that you can share with a mentee is having a growth mindset. And that's just so important for everything in life. Just and that, it, that growth mindset is one in which you believe that you're always capable of learning something new, as opposed to believing that you can't do something because of where you are in society or because of how you were brought up or because of your own mental limitations or physical limitations. But I think sharing that growth mindset or that capacity for growth mindset is it's just it's just so important. And I try to you know, I, I try to be silly with my you know colleagues and mentees. And also show them that I have a lot of serious uh, sort of you know background to to uh, back up my my discoveries or my you know, objectives, but just so that sense of fun, but also a sense of openness and learning that they can take you know, they can take forward with them. Fantastic, fantastic. So Kathy, you have a diversity of uh, experiences here, but share with us one of your most impactful mentoring events. Do you know, it's interesting. I think there, there are so many, but I think the one that comes to mind instantly as, as you've just shared that is that I actually learn from the younger generation a lot. You know, people think that mentoring is actually one way and it's usually somebody who has more lived experiences. But I can tell you, you know, I shared the story about, you know, with my younger daughter. Um, but I also can actually tell you, you know, of incidents where I've actually had um, young people say to me, actually, Kathy, I don't want you to review what I've done. I want to be able to actually go through that process my, myself, actually get feedback, take away the lessons, and then I know that I've done it on my own. Now, you know what that actually shows me? A, that um, they're actually courageous because you know, I think that that's the one thing that we often actually um, forget is just to taking that risk enables us to be courageous in exploring what else is possible. What else can we do, right? So this particular um, young person had to stand up in front of an audience of thousands of people and actually share what nobody else had been able to give him feedback on. But what he took away was, I can do it. And sometimes, you know, as mentors, we think that we need to give them all the information, but we don't. <laughs> so I think that's the one thing is just look up and look down for, you know, information, inspiration, because we can be mentored by everybody. That's I, I love that example, Kathy. I was going to say that I think hearing that and also, you know, listening to Sejal talk, for example, and how you're so open and want to, you know, give give up and give down in terms of helping people. I think when you when you share as a mentor that sort of openness and receptiveness that it does go two ways, that inspires your mentees, right? To be the same. And that's that's we want to fill the world with those kinds of people. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And Jen, I love your idea of that growth mindset because the world is changing. Technology is evolving. Jobs are changing. We all need that growth mindset. And Kathy, I agree with you 100% as well. I have several protégés and they are teaching me that I need to be on Reels and YouTube <laughs> and, you know, they're, they're helping me do things. So it is a two-way street. And the other thing I've learned is when I talk with a protege, I'm actually learning more. So it's so wonderful. So Sejal, I wanted to ask you, now you're on the other side um, on our panel. You applied for the formal mentoring program with ANUSA. What was the criteria you used to select your mentor? Um, very honestly, uh, one of the reasons I apply for a lot of formal mentorship programs along with seeking out mentors you know, in a, in a more informal fashion is 
because of honestly at that time i think it was covid uh, very actively as a student uh, without have like i wasn't at university i was at home we were you know kind of all sent back we were studying from home and at that time it was extremely limited the interactions just in terms of the people that you meet so i think at that time a formal mentorship program really really uh, was something that i needed to see a new perspective into what the industry is all about what can i expect in some sort of sense and i think one of the criteria that i had was that i wanted someone who was very unlike myself so someone who would not like who didn't necessarily choose the same path that i did while i do love looking at people who took the exact same path to see how they got where they got and you know what are those little tips and tricks i think that comes from experience uh, i also actively was seeking out people who are very very different and diverse from where i am uh which is like here and my background is extremely different like i come from uh from an engineering background she was more into like public relations a little more into business uh, a little more into understanding you know the the psychology of people as a whole uh about event management so i think that perspective really helped me because it made me realize that it's not just one thing that can lead you to success it's also finding these variety of interests and shelly you mentioned that the world is ever changing you know the jobs are ever changing and i think i've been fortunate you know fortunate enough to be in in that world because around me constantly from when i joined university to when i graduated i think the world has changed tenfold uh the kind of job opportunities that we have now the kind of research uh, that we have going on the kind of innovation the kind of talks uh and and where we're heading as as kind of i think a generation so i think to surround myself with people who are both like and unlike myself was a huge huge criteria and i've done that through the sgac mentorship program as well uh where i've taken mentorship from a fellow student so she was a phd student and still is so she she's my mentor and it's different because you you get to learn from people who've had this experience in the industry for years at an end but also from people who might be very similar to age as you when they're just finishing up either their masters or a phd and trying to get into the industry so you know like that perspective really helps and i think uh, just to you know sum it all up one of the things as a student i've realized and i think kathy mentioned this is that you need to ask and that's true if you never take the chance to ask you'll never know so i think everyone on on linkedin on all formal and informal mentorship programs are really really open to the idea of helping students i think that's something that the student community as a whole can leverage and as i transition into you know being a full time working professional i'm still learning that so many people are so giving and like because they relate to it they relate to you know working in in places where you don't necessarily see a lot like yourself i work in a team where i'm the youngest by a decade probably and there's no other female so to have that support system and and the mentors really helps fantastic now i do want to highlight sage me mentioned a number of great uh mentoring programs one is with the united nations office of outer space affairs space for women she talked about space generation advisory council and right here with women tech network an amazing mentoring program i have volunteered to be a mentor i have some fantastic proteges who have taught me a lot so uh they just came out with their new platform so please if you're interested in being a mentor you can be a mentor at any stage sage we expect you to sign up to be a mentor and encourage <laughs> others as well as you know so sign up to be a mentor and then you can also sign up to um uh be a protege so that just came out within the last two weeks i'm sure uh anna will talk more about that so mentoring is super important and we need to support those programs now sajel i want to stay on this because you did a survey a global survey and wrote a white paper on mentorship in the space industry and you talked about how important mentorship is for gender minorities and you had a few findings you did your uh results at the international astronautical congress could you just give us a couple of the key findings you found yep yep and i'm going to start off with something that really blew my mind because i like with such a diverse uh, kind of cohort of survey takers i did not expect these results but 100% of the people who took the survey believe that mentorship has impacted their life for the good 
a hundred percent so that like let that sink in because this is uh these are people who are from the age of i think 13 years old to over 60 so that's a huge kind of dynamic and a huge age demographic that we were actually targeting while putting out this survey and what i've also seen which was really interesting is that once someone has served as uh, you know, has been in a relation and a mentee mentor relationship and has been a mentee for years at an end, they were 80% more likely to go back and serve as a mentor. So I think when when we start off that cycle of, you know, people volunteering to come in and, and mentor uh, people of any age, I think, in my opinion, then there are also those people on the other end who are very, very willing to give back through this because it has impacted their lives. In a, in a positive way. Yeah. So I think these were the two key findings that really, really fascinated me because it was interesting with the kind of demographic that we had. Um, in And most of the people were not just involved as mentors or just as mentees, but rather as both. So they were also mentors while being mentees as well, which was interesting. I think we mm. touched upon how it's a, it's a co-dependent thing. It's not just a one-way street. And... Um, but one of the things that we also saw was there are more informal mentorship programs, but I understand it is uh, kind of less of a hassle to formally apply and then get selected and then, you know, identify a mentor. So that is something that we proposed as one of kind of the future changes that, that we could do or we could have where a lot of like student from a very student centric perspective, student organizations is where we start highlighting these mentorship programs. But we also continue it when we, you know, enter into like the working environment or as young professionals, because I am sure like there are people around me who definitely need that mentorship, who who seek out that mentorship. But for young professionals, uh, somehow the numbers come out to be a little bit lesser in, in comparison to the ones and the opportunities that students have. So I think those were some things that we highlighted as well. And uh, Shelly, I had your testimonial testimonial from a lot of uh, people who took the survey. And uh, I'd be more than happy to you know, share this paper with everyone. It's, it's a white paper. It's out there for everyone to read. Uh, so yeah, Shelly, thank you for uh, asking that question. Really, I'm always really excited to share my research. Fantastic. And we hope Sejo will be able to grow that research with a more expanded version of mentorship beyond the space industry. So, Kathy, I want to pivot to you because what is one of your most positive results of a mentor-mentee relationship? I think the, the one thing is, is that um, like what um, Sejo has actually just shared, you know, I also have this same philosophy in the work that I do. It's always the pay it forward. You know, and I use specifically the term pay it forward because it is actually then done with um, no attachment. You do it willingly. Whereas I think if we use the terminology pay it back, there's something that we need to contribute to because we've received something. So the mental mentee, if we have the same philosophy of you've received and I'm paying it forward so there's nothing attached, they innately actually do the same in paying it forward to somebody else. I do that in business. So I have, um, I guess, I choose to work with businesses that actually have what I call a philanthropical or humanitarian element in the business. And if they don't, then one of my criteria is, is that they need to. So that's that paying it forward in our philosophy. So they need to actually have something embedded. And it's not about money. It's actually of time. When we give time, I think that shows people that's the most prized possession on this planet. We can never get it back. If we give up our time, then they actually learn, see, believe, breathe, experience that and do the same. So that's probably the one thing that I would say is the greatest thing that I take away from any sort of mentee, mentor relationship. It is that gift of giving and it's eternal. Fantastic. Well, Jen, you get the last question. What has been one of your best and most successful stories you want to share with us? Um, well, in the theme of mentoring, I have a particular one. <laughs> and that is, uh, uh, I uh, was advising on a, on a, a student training program that six, seven years ago now. And 
one of the students reached out to me and asked if he could come in the field because he wanted to learn more about field work. And I said, okay, uh, sure, you can come and be our ambassador <laughs> from the program. And anyway, he didn't go away. <laughs> <laughs> We just kept coming back, and every every summer I had to figure out a new title for him. And uh, you know, first it was a young scholar, then it was a, an affiliate, then it was an intern, and then it was an associate. <laughs> and the wonderful thing is that during all this time, um, sometimes he would send his colleagues to me. You know, she'll give me some great advice. <laughs> Thanks for volunteering my time, but it was, it was usually pretty fun. And um, the wonderful thing is that this this young man is um, not only is he had been passionate about wanting a career in space so he's but he just this year got a job with the canadian space agency and mm -hmm. uh he wrote he wrote me the most beautiful thank you note and um i still get choked up but so does his mother his mother oh. just wrote me a thank you note and made me cry <laughs> because she said thank you for caring for my son and helping him and uh, so get <laughs> but, i think i think kathy that ties in with your paying it forward more than we'll ever know I, I, we it only, sure does. Sorry, Shelly, I was going to. I'm so I know, but we only have two short minutes left. So what I'd like to mm. do is I'll give everybody like 30 seconds uh, to wrap things up. So Kathy, I know you've got a closing comment, so I'll turn it over to you with your last thought. I think if, you know, we all have the ability to actually make a difference for another woman, another girl, anybody. Today is actually the day that we place future female leaders' names at the table so that we actually celebrate their voices of the future. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Kathy. Jen, your closing 30-second comment. How do I top that? <laughs> I don't know how you yeah. can top it. It was amazing. Yeah, that was fantastic. I guess just um, I think by coming together um, as you know, open people want to lead, lead and share, it inspires us to continue on that vein. It's so easy to get trapped in a downward spiral from just day-to-day -day small microaggressions and small small problems. And um, it's much better to network and see other positive faces and think about what we can do together. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And you also are part of the leadership for the Space for Women informal mm -hmm. networking group. So for those of you who are looking for that network, uh, reach out to us, we'll help you connect. Sejal, I'll give you the last 30 seconds. Oh, wow. First of all, that was wonderful advice. So I just have two words, which is take chances. And this is for everyone out there. Please never forget that uh, it's always a no if you don't ask. So please take that chance for whatever it is that you hope to get to, because if you don't, no one else will. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, this has been a fantastic panel with my screen frozen the whole time. But I want to thank Women Tech Network, Anna, and all the sponsors that make this event possible. I also want to encourage each and every one of you, again, go to that website, Women Tech Network, sign up to be a mentor, sign up to be a protege, because that, as you learn from Sajel's report, from Jen and Kathy's experience, that's how we can all give back and change the world to be a better place. Thank you so much. This is Shelley Brunswick, and I look forward to seeing you all around the galaxy.